talk about being an idiot. Toronto Raptors player, Jonte Porter, has been banned for life from the NBA for gambling. An NBA investigation found the 24-year-old disclosed confidential information to sports bettors wagering on games, and he even bet on the Raptors to lose. Porter's the second person to be banned by Commissioner Adam Silver for violating league rules. The first was the former owner of the L.A. Clippers, Donald Sterling, in 2014. Silver called Porter's actions blatant. Now, uh, in their statement announcing uh, this decision, they laid out exactly what went on. And what happened was uh, that they, they discovered suspicious activity when someone uh, bet on Porter's actions, meaning his ability to play in games. What ended up happening was he said that he was checking out of certain games uh, because of injury when, in fact, the bet was that he would not play in a certain amount of minutes in the game. So someone who, according to the NBA, that Porter uh, told someone who he knew was a better of games what he, what he was going to do, and that person bet uh, $80,000 on Porter's, essentially, game in action. That's what caught the attention uh, of folks and then NBA. Now, uh, when you talk about uh, this decision, uh, this is the press release uh, that they released. They said, uh, it said another individual with whom Porter associated and he knew to be an NBA better subsequently placed an $80,000 parlay proposition bet with an online sports book to win $1.1 million, wagering that Porter would underperform in the March 20th game. The league's investigation also found that Porter limited his own participation to influence the outcome of one or more bets on his performance in at least one Raptors game. In March 20th game, Porter played only three minutes, claiming that he felt ill. Due to the unusual betting activity and actions of the player, the $80,000 proposition bet was frozen and was not paid out. Now, this is what's crazy, y'all. Okay, in, in, from January through March 24, while traveling with the Raptors or Raptors 905, the Raptors NBA G League affiliate, Porter placed at least 13 bets on NBA games using an associate's online betting account. These bets range in size from $15 to $22,000 $22, for a total of $54,094. The total payouts from those bets was $76,059, resulting in net winnings of $21,965. None of the bets involved any games in game in which Porter played. Three of the bets were multi-game parlay bets that included one Raptors game in which Porter bet that the Raptors would lose. All three bets lost. Now, um, what's crazy here is that, and this, the statement doesn't say it, and, and I'm gonna actually send an email in a second uh, to uh, NBA Commissioner Adam Silver, uh, because here's what I wanna, what I find, because the statement doesn't address this here. When Donald Sterling was uh, uh, banned, Donald Sterling could not even enter an NBA arena. He could not attend anything related to the NBA. This statement doesn't actually say that's the case. Now, John T. Porter's brother, Michael Porter Jr., is a star for the Denver Nuggets. So if the NBA moves forward with what they did against Donald Sterling, the reality is this here. If, Michael, if, if John T. Porter's brother, Michael Porter, let's say, leads his team back to the NBA Finals and has a sweep, for the family, he can't even be in the building. He can't even be there as a part of a, a part of a parade celebration. But here's what's crazy to me. You make it to the top of the top, the NBA, and you throw that away for $21,000? Now, he's going from the G League to the NBA back and forth, but dude, you're there. You're there. Now, we knew this was going to happen because you've always had you've always had various gambling scandals in sports. College basketball, you had an NBA ref, okay, who was involved in a gambling scandal. You also now have all of these leagues now that are accepting 
money from gamblers, being from all these different companies. ESPN, you read an ESPN story today, you can't even read the story without seeing uh, ESPN bet. I, when I first thought, I thought ESPN had a sports show on BET, uh, but it's actually ESPN bet. Uh, and so you've had some NFL players have also been suspended for betting on NFL games and, and be, being involved. Um, Gavin, his was interesting. I was talking to, and I cannot remember, man, I can't remember who I was talking to. It was a former football, NFL player who was telling me he could not get his kids interested in playing sports. And I, I wish I could remember who it was. And his wife said, why don't you just, why, why don't you take them out? But you know what he told me? He said, oh, now all of a sudden, his son is focused and intent on watching NFL every week because of betting, because of betting. I talked to a, a father of a young athlete, high school, and all of his teammates, now they're betting left and right. Jonte Porter is not gonna be the last. And I can guarantee, look, we saw this at, I think it was uh, Iowa State. We see this already in the NCAA. I can't, because sports gambling has now been expanded because of a Supreme Court decision, I'm telling folks right now, go ahead and mark it down. You're gonna see more gambling scandals of players on the pro level, the collegiate level, and they're gonna, if they, if they take any bets on the high school level, it's gonna happen there as well because of the proliferation of gambling. Given you're on mute. It says my mic is on. There you go. Now you're on. Okay, weird. I don't know why. My bad. Uh, but Roland, no, I was just agreeing with you. I think it's so sad for John Tace, a player who had a long career ahead of him, like you said, you know, kind of going between the G League and, and the actual NBA. So it's unclear, I guess, how his career would have progressed. But, you know, it's the first player or coach to be banned permanently from the NBA since 1954. And I think just considering how much he stood to make in his career, you have to think, I mean, at least I wonder – does he have some sort of, you know, gambling problem or gambling addiction? I have no idea. This is me just purely speculating. But we do know that as the leagues are moving to expand, right, their sports betting offerings with uh, FanDuel and DraftKings and all these other companies and uh, BetMGM and Caesars, that there are a lot of people who do struggle with gambling addictions. Now, again, I'm not sure if that's the case uh, for Jonte, but I think we are seeing, right, that as the leagues are um, – recognizing the revenue that they stand to make from sports betting. I think it's like, actually, when I was at the NFL, this is an issue I looked at really closely, you know, as states have continued to, to legalize sports betting, we're seeing just these markets, just the floodgates completely open. Uh, but for the leagues, right, the way that, that they have to make sure that integrity is maintained uh, is key, you know, for them to continue making money. And so we are seeing the leagues crack down, whether it's, players, whether it's league staff, whether it's coaches, general managers, you name it. I hope that this is a wake up call for, you know, other players who might be tempted to do this. Um, but I also hope that at least it maybe sparks a conversation because I think we are at an inflection point where, you know, there's just so much more money to be made in this market that, you know, we talk about some of the ugly underbellies that come with, you know, sports betting, right? And I've even talked to people, you know, who work in professional sports who, you know, work for entities that stand to make a lot of money from sports betting, but who themselves are kind of split or, you know, feel those qualms as to, you know, we got to make sure we do this responsibly. And it's interesting because, you know, there are some big holdout states that have yet to legalize sports betting. Um, and, and for them, Texas, Georgia come to mind, a lot of it is on the sort of like ethical, you know, grounds that they're not sure how they feel about, uh, you know, legalizing something like sports betting and potentially opening the door to, you know, many people getting um, hooked on sports betting. But the fact of the matter is, whether it's legal or whether it's illegal, you're still going to have people engage in this activity. And I think the argument in favor of the legalization of sports betting is that, you know, if we legalize it, at least it's out in the open. We can regulate it. We can tax it. We can use some of that tax revenue to fund the you know, problem gambling treatment services that states are funding. So it's a really complicated 
you know, issue for sure. We're just going to have to to get a grip on how we go forward and certainly a very sad situation for John Taylor. you got to be stupid as hell, Robert, to be 24, year old, 24 years old. You make it to the top of the top and you throw it all away for a total of $21,000 in earnings. I can guarantee you uh, that John Tay uh, is not going to be in a position where he could potentially uh, land a job earning him millions of dollars a year if he had continued to get better in the NBA. Well, well you know, I, I blame the league on this because they're now talking, they had the all-star game in Las Vegas. They had the in-season tournament uh, in Las Vegas. As you said, there's a bet MGM draft Kings, uh, something banner on every square inch of the NBA playoffs and the play in tournament, the mid season tournament and everything else. And it was easy to punish John Tay Porter because nobody knows who the hell he is. Uh, but let's say it's a different situation. Let's say that this was Steph Curry or Kevin Durant or Luka Doncic. Do you think the league really would have suspended them from life for this? No, they would not have. Well, uh, we well, well have, uh, but first of all, but that but those players, no, I actually I disagree. I'm telling you, I'm telling you right now, okay, the one the one thing, the one way for your league to die is if people believe the outcome has already been determined. If Kyrie Irving well, or Luka Donick or Draymond Green, if they were busted betting on games, they're gone. Well, look, look, Raleigh, remember there was a, a rumor that in the 90s, the reason Jordan retired the first time was because he had been betting on games. No, 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 that's incorrect. No, 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 that's incorrect. What was, what was talked about was because of Michael Jordan's gambling off the court, because of his gambling on the golf course, because of his gambling in casinos, that was being talked about. Never, never was it ever discussed that Michael Jordan was gambling on games. Look, Roland, when you invite gambling into a league, when you invite gambling into sports, this is going to happen. You can look at Calvin Ridley when he played for the Falcons. You can look at any of these leagues. So these these leagues are going to have to make a determination. Either you're going to be in bed with the gamblers, either you're going to be in bed with the, the numbers runners, et cetera, or you're not going to be so. If you're in league with them, then set rules for players where they can gamble on these games. It's just the reality of the situation. They, they We can keep lying to ourselves and pretending that everybody in the league is making, you know, a max contract. John T. Porter can probably go to China and make more money than he ever was going to make in the G League. He can go to Turkey. He can go to the Euro League. He can go play in Puerto Rico with uh, Boogie Cousins and uh, uh, Hassan Whiteside. There's other places to go if you're a mediocre player. But in lo as long as the league is going to be in bed, the bed with these betting organizations, you're going to have these situations pop up, and they're either going to have to figure out how to deal with it, or they're going to have to get out of bed and uh, forego those billions of dollars they're getting from these games. Gambling companies. Look, I totally understand, uh, Rebecca, the point about uh, them, them being in bed with sports betting companies, but the reality is this here. Um, I can't blame the league for a player choosing to check out of a game early and told somebody about the bet and then, all, and then and to, to make them $1.1 million. That's on the player. And here's the piece. The reason this is different is that it, it was it was the when the Supreme Court gave its decision uh, to allow for online betting and it, it went outside of Atlantic City and outside of Las Vegas. That's when all of this changed. Now you've got gambling all across the country, multiple states allowing online because you had a lot you had a lot of uh, barriers that were there. But this is on the individual. Every player is told, do not bet on games. He literally bet on games for Toronto to lose. You're with the organization. Yeah, your ass got to go. <laughs> so, first of all, the NBA is full of crap. <laughs> the NBA is, is so hypocritical. And first, talking about the, the purity of basketball and people are tuning in because of the purity and they don't want to know that, that the fix is in. I mean, we already know the Porter family doesn't have to worry about the Nuggets making it to the finals. You know why? Because the league really wants the Lakers. Um, no, no, no. I, 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 no, Rebecca, that, Rebecca, that can, <laughs> like, Rebecca, that can't hold up because the Nuggets won the title last year. Right, right. You're, you're right. But statistically, how often in this era do we have back-to-back -back champions? But it, oh, no, no, but, it, but, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The point is, the Nuggets won the championship last year, and they can win it again this year. The bottom, but, the, but, the, but, the, but the bottom line is this here. If, if the Sterling rules are applied, and I'm going to send an email, uh, uh, I'm going to send the NBA an email, 
he literally can't be near any NBA type of event. And so what he doesn't what, what, what has happened here, he's totally screwed himself. And to Robert's point, I don't think, I, I, yeah, you got Greece, you got Europe, you got all these other different places. I'm not sure if I'm any of those people. I want somebody on my team who has acknowledged betting for his own team to lose. I wouldn't be surprised if they all say, sorry, dude, you can't come play Good here. He screwed himself. He's going to go find him a regular-ass job. And it's so bad, he can't even get a job carrying his brother's bags because I doubt he'll be allowed into an arena. I hear you, but I'm also not going to get on here and all of a sudden be pro-NBA because the bottom line is the NBA is making multi-millions of dollars with all of their multi-year contracts with um, 365 Bet, with um, Bet MGM, with DraftKings, and the other authorized, specifically the NBA authorized um, sport better operators. So I think it's very rich for the NBA to now say, oh, okay, so everyone else in everyone else can bet on these games, but not our players. Yes, the NBA, NBA the NBA, NBA, the NBA has had liquor sponsors, but, uh, and the bottom line is, if you if you get charged with a DWI, your ass might get suspended. Look, well, Bob. Look, look. I don't think that that's analog- na- analogous. Actually, it is. The idea, the reason why it's not analogous, because now we're talking about public safety and public health. No, wait a minute. We're, we're talking. You're betting on a game. You, your actions literally are determining whether the product that's on the court, whether you want a, a fan wants to be able to watch a game and go. I'm watching players play that the best team win, not a guy checked out of the game to help a better win $1.1 million. His ass got to go. And look, I get the NBA accepting uh, 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 sponsor money from betting companies, but a player, it's, you cannot bet on the league. Everybody is told that. That's on him. Some level of personal responsibility has to be accepted. He screwed up. I'm not arguing that what John Tay did was smart. So let's be clear about that. What my argument is, is that I still find the NBA to be hypocritical because they because when you now allow for legalized sports betting to enter into your league and you go into these formal partnerships, you are also increasing the likelihood of your active players betting on the game. And so I don't think that the NBA has I done disagree. enough to crack down on this and prevent this from happening. But I will also say that the NBA is hypocritical in general. There's other issues in which the NBA is hypocritical, such as um, finding players if they test positive for uh, marijuana in their system. When we know that THC is not a performance enhancing... Well, 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 actually, well, actually, actually, well, hold up, hold up. The leagues have actually changed their policy on marijuana. That's changed. So that's, that, that, that's not the same conversation as you have five years ago. So they've changed the policy when it comes to marijuana. You're right. I still think I know I'm right. NBA, I, I know I'm right. I'm I, like, I know that. <laughs> and I'm acknowledging that you're right. But what I will not do, I'm not about to get in here and act like the NBA is this perfect league. No, no, is, no, 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 not. I, no sport. one, no one. Ha- no, 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 Rebecca. No, no, that's gaslighting. Nobody said the NBA is a perfect league. What we're talking about is a player who bet on not only games, who gave a better, who gave a better inside information about his health, who purposely checked out of games so he would not hit certain statistical numbers at the betting placed on. That's a whole different level of betting. That is literally determining the outcome. Okay, that's we, we can talk about the, the White Sox scandal uh, of the 1919 Chicago White Sox, or, you know, the, uh, uh, which, which they also, they call the Black Sox because of that scandal. We can talk about Pete Rose. Uh, uh, look, look, Pete look, Rose. look, we can talk about Pete Rose, and guess what? His ass still not in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Well, let's let's be for real. John T. Porter ain't deciding no games. No. There ain't no game no, being no, decided no, by no, what John no, T. Porter no, does or doesn't no, do. No. It doesn't matter. If you if you purposely say, hey, I'm ill, I can't play, and, and you have you basically told somebody, yo, 
drop a $80,000 bet that I'm not going to score eight points and I'm not going to play 15 minutes in the game or 10 minutes in the game and you purposely check out of the game? Yeah, your ass got to go. But ro- Roland, where, would that bet have let's been say, possible? Say, look, what? Bro, let's say the job- hold on, hold on, Rebecca, say what? Would that bet have been possible if the NBA didn't authorize um, these platforms as official? Yes, um, that, 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 that bet that bet had nothing to do with the platforms. That's you placing. First of all, you can bet on anything these days. You in a Super Bowl, you can bet on who's gonna get the first down. Is the kickoff? Are they gonna return it or they gonna kneel it? You, you, you can bet on anything these days. And so that has nothing to do with sponsors. That has to do with somebody placing a bet on the actions in a game. And here's a player saying, I am going to do something myself to create this in order for you to win. Let's just be real clear. Don't nobody place a, this is how dumb John Tate Porter is, okay? This is how dumb he is. You tell your boy, <coughs> go ahead and place an $80,000 bet that I'm not gonna play 10 minutes. And your ass go in the game and check out after three, uh, 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 I'm ill. And a betting company, and let's be real clear, the betting companies got better investigators than the FBI because they actually hire former FBI agents. And they going, wait a minute, to Robert's point, who the hell betting on lame-ass John Tay Porter? Hmm. Then they went, they didn't bet $8. They bet $80,000. That's what we call a highly unusual and suspect bet. That this player, who, who, who's a, not a major player, a bench player bouncing between the G League and the NBA, is not going to play a certain number of minutes. That's what a company said, yeah, we're, gonna, we're, gonna, we're not going to pay this out. We're going to check this thing out. That's how his dumb ass got busted. Given he should have got kicked out for being that stupid. Yeah, what I was going to say, like, in response to Rebecca's point, I actually would argue that now that sports betting is legal, it actually makes it a lot easier to detect these sorts of things. And so players should actually be, like, cognizant of the fact that if they are making these bets, that they're probably going to be found out. And so, yeah, so any sort of, like, problem gambling or addiction that Dante might have aside, yeah, he's... And uh, yeah, there are many words I could use to describe his actions and describe him. But I can say for me, when I worked for the NFL, there is one policy that the league made abundantly clear for us as just mere employees who are making however much money we were making. And that's don't you dare bet on any sporting event. So you're telling me that you're a player. You're about to go bet not only on some random game, but your own game and your own performance. Now that sports betting is legalized and these companies, like you said, Roland, have people who work for them who are scanning and looking for, you know, these different bets that are happening. Nah. <laughs> but, but, but Roland, one, one point that I do want to make is that part of my issue also with this is that gambling addiction is a medical condition. And the league has to treat it as such. It's not just he's making a bad decision. Your brain is rewired when you have a gambling addiction issue. You need medical treatment. And instead of suspending him for life, I'd rather the league have made an example of him by making him go to treatment, making him become reformed, and using him as an ambassador to other players and to the public writ large. Because while you're pumping these millions of dollars into advertising campaigns with Kevin Hart and The Rock and all these other entertainers and athletes to get people gambling more, you need to be doing something on the other side, not just a little token they put in, the little disclaimer at the end of the commercial saying, if you have an addiction problem, call this 1-800 number. Really investing in and using uh, John Tay Porter as a mechanism to teach people about uh, uh, gambling addiction. Let's say that John Tay's brother, he has happened to see him fall down a flight of stairs right before the game against the Lakers on uh, this weekend, and then he decides to gamble on that. How the hell would the, uh, would the NBA police that? You're diving down a rabbit hole that really doesn't have an end. Actually, of trying act, to make these things go, act, I get some treatment. Actually, you're not driving down, diving down a rabbit hole. The bottom line is, listen, anybody who understands the NBA 
okay? When we talk about, when we talk about uh, investigations, we talk about knowing who's doing what. I can tell you right now, I know for a fact that NBA and NFL security, they, damn, they are better than the Secret Service. Oh, Roland, I mean, the head of player investigations is the former head of the ATF. <laughs> And the point here, see, see, th- 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 this ain't no, you know, just, you know, dude walking around chomping on a hot dog, you know, barely hanging over his belt. No, they know what, ca- when a player comes to a team, the team like this here, you know, we already know what your ass been doing. Uh-huh. They know, they, doc, their investigators are on point. Here's what the example is going to be. The example is going to be to any other NBA player. F around, you're going to find out. And what you're about to do, you mentioned Calvin Ridley. Ask his ass how it felt to sit at home for a year not getting that NFL check. Oh, he, he was re- repenting. He came back, had a great year, and got a big contract. But ask them other players. I'm telling you right now. NHL players, baseball players, in, uh, uh, in, in NFL players, soccer players. Hey, I don't care who you are. John T. Porter's name is going to, he, his picture is going to be like a poster, like at the post office. It's going to be in every locker room. Act a fool, and your ass going to go right alongside John T. Porter. And all I'm saying is, to any, any athlete out there, in fact, if I pull up, that was a brother, uh, his nickname was Headache. Um, he played for Arizona State. It was a point shaving scandal. Headache, literally, he was out of Dallas. That brother, he could have played years in the NBA. But he took that money point shaving in college and never got there. And to, if you go to Netflix, you will see the special. To this day, he regrets that decision. He cost himself millions over a few thousand dollars. 21, this boy could have got $21,000 just going to a signing event with his brother. So he made a grown folk decision and now he's 24 years old and now he is out of the NBA. So Jonte, this one on you. Fanbase is pioneering a new era of social media for the creator economy. This next generation social media app with over 600,000 users is raising $17 million and now is your chance to invest. For details on how to invest, visit startengine.com slash fanbase or scan the QR code. Another way we're giving you the freedom to be you without limits.